you're looking to be a little bit better with your distance control on your pitching with your sterling iron single length irons or your irons and wedges in general, then I've got a few things here to share with you that can hopefully help you uh, improve your distance control. So the first thing is to check uh, your lofts. Uh, it's an equipment thing here and make sure that there's a nice even spread um, that's going to uh, give you the distance gapping that you want and or uh, that works for you uh, in your style of play. So for example with the sterling irons here we have five degree gaps from the pitch is 45 to the gap is 50 to the sand 55 to the lob 60 so there's five degrees a nice even spread there so that's going to uh, help with the distance gapping. Um, it, me personally I actually go up to six um, I don't use the lob wedge. I like to have an extra club at the other end of the bag for our longer approaches. And I, I bump my, I bent my gap wedge and sand wedge up, so I go 45, 51, 57. And generally, I don't really like lofts over 57 or 58 personally. Um, it doesn't mean that you know you shouldn't play a 60 or 62 or 64, whatever you want. It just suits my style of play and my style of game. So. You can have six degree gaps, five degree gaps as these are designed, or you can go with four degree gaps, whatever you want. Just get your gapping down and get it in a way, a way that suits your style of pitching and suits your style, suits your game basically. So that's the first thing I would say is just the equipment, lo the, the lofts uh, and equipment uh, check here. And then next I would say to uh, and check your contact and contact is super important and with uh, sterling irons here we designed the club head to have the sweet spot right in the the center from a left to right standpoint here um, some wedges are made where the sweet spots out more towards the toe some irons have the sweet spots more towards the heel um, we designed ours to be right in the center there and that doesn't mean you necessarily have to hit, hit the center. Um, sometimes with pitching, actually, with pitching you probably want to be a little bit lower on the club face because you get a little bit more spin. Um, but the important thing is just that you're con striking it consistently in the same point, in, uh, same spot on the face. Because if you miss the sweet spot, or the, well, the sweet spot is going to have the uh, most amount of ball speed, the most amount of energy transfer from club to ball. If the further out you get from the, the, the sweet spot there, then the more ball speed that you can lose. So it's super important to whether you're striking in the, on the sweet spot or a little bit low or wherever you want to be hitting, that you're consistently hitting the same spot uh, as often and as closely and as tightly of a dis strike dispersion as you can. So to, to work on that, I've got a couple little drills here. Get some uh, Dr. Scholl's foot powder, Dr. Scholl's Odorex foot powder spray or some other kind of foot powder spray or a kid's chalk spray, some kind of little spray that you can spray on the club face, wipes off easily with the towel. And the little thin film that's going across the face there, when you hit balls, with it, it's going to leave imprints on the club face with where your strike is. So you can hit five, ten balls or something and just kind of see what your strike pattern is. And if you're pretty consistently in the same point in space, then you're probably okay. Uh, and you probably don't need to be watching this video because your, your strike is pretty good. <laughs> but if your strike is a little bit inconsistent, um, then uh, that could certainly be something you could work on. Um, so just get a bucket of balls, get your foot powder spray or your, whatever spray you're using, and just practice uh, the, on the bucket of balls, practice improving your strike. And you don't have to necessarily think too much about how to do it. Just uh, kind of let yourself fine tune, let yourself adjust, and, and don't overthink it and just try and improve uh, your strike there. A couple things that can help with that are uh, one I would say to use the um, air blow or humming drill uh, trick drill I guess whatever you want to call it 
So either hum mm, while you're swinging or just blow some air out through your nose and mouth such that you can sense it. Um, but other people, uh, you know, if you don't want to hear someone, have someone hear you humming, you can just blow air out. And watch for the flow. You want the flow to be smooth, ideally. So mm, when you're swinging, but if it goes mm, mm, then you've got a little bit of tension that you can work out of your swing. And why that's important is because think of a, a tetherball going around the maypole. Uh, if there's no rigidity in the in the no uh, rigidity in the rope there, the ball is going to be coming around the same point in space every time. But if you uh, have a little bit of tension and you're shortening your rope during the time that it's going around, then it's gonna it's not gonna it's gonna affect where it's coming around every time. It's not going to come around the same point in space. So, and you got not much room to work with here to be have a good strike. And you, again, you want that consistent strike so you get the same ball speed. So being smooth, being tension-free, being relaxed, not necessarily being slow or guiding it, but just watching the tension that you have in your swing can help, uh, help the club come around to the same point in space. So that's one thing that can help you out. And then also what you might do with, uh, from a technical standpoint is watch the amount of shaft clean that you have. Try and... Uh, come in a little bit more shaft vertical and pick or sweep or collect the ball um, rather than hitting down on it and taking a divot. Um, if you're hitting down on it, especially with a shaft leaning forward like this, this leading edge can really grab into the ground. Um, so if you're coming through a little bit more shaft vertical, the bounce, the bottom part of the club there is, is exposed a little bit more. So it kind of almost it doesn't prevent, but it, it decreases the, the amount of dig that it's going to have if you do catch it a little bit fat. So um, being shaft vertical try and, uh, uh, can help with the, give you a little bit more forgiveness there um, to, so you're not catching them fat on occasion. Or if you do catch them fat, the, your distance control is going to be a little bit better because the club's still going to get through there. And then picking or sweeping or collecting the ball is going to help as well because, um, you know, again, you're minimizing the chance of you hitting the ground, uh, which can really affect your distance control. And also, when you are picking or sweeping it, you're going to get a little bit lower, lower strike on the face rather than in the center, uh, or, or a little bit higher. It might be a little bit lower. And we won't get into vertical gear effect in that vid this video, but it's going to give you a little bit more spin, which is something that a lot of people want more on their pitches. Um, so just that's just kind of a nice byproduct there. So that's another thing I would say. And then I should mention the clock drill. So it's common in teaching or the instruction world to, if you imagine the face on view of yourself like this, and then you swing, and then wherever your lead arm goes to, so say in a clock, this is gonna be going to nine o'clock, this is going to be going to like 10.30. This is like, you know, 7.30-ish. I'm not talking about being necessarily perfect here, but you get the idea. There's a certain amount of distance that you want to take the, the club back in your backswing and then have it come through um, in the same amount. So if you go to 10.30 over here, you go to 10.30 over here, and you measure the distance with each of your wedges for say a 7.30, a 9 o'clock, and a 10.30 uh, uh, shot. So that gives you some uh, decent distances or uh, an idea of distances. Generally speaking, the 9 o'clock ones are, are, at least in the testing that I've seen, are going to be the ones that are the most accurate and not as much as the 7.30 or the 10.30. The 9 o'clocks are pretty, pretty good. So you're going over here to over here with your different wedges. Um, However, I think that's good to give you a general sense. Um, and it's okay if you play by number. And I used to play by number, but I actually found out that I'm a little bit better playing instinctively. And when you think about other sports, if you're throwing a baseball, you don't think to a target, you don't think about like, okay, when I take it back this far and throw it this way, it's going to go this distance. If I take it back this far and come all the way through, it's 
I'm gonna go this, you know, this distance. I think it will in baseball, you just kind of look at your target and then you react, react. I think that pitching distance control is a little bit better when you're using your instincts. Um, and and I, I say this is, is because like when I, when I used to do the clock drills, those worked okay in practice and, I, and when I sat there and hit ball after ball after ball, like I would um, you know, be hitting the same distance, same distance, same distance. And then I get out on the course and, or particularly this one time I played in uh, the Tusker Kenya Open, a challenge tour event in Kenya. And um, it was a, the main, it was the country's open basically, a big televised event, a lot of galleries around. So I had some nerves going there and then I hit a nice big drive, and then I had a pitch, maybe a 60-yard pitch, into the back pin. I'm like, okay, that's this shot. And I'll do that with my wedge, but I had some adrenaline going there, and then I just flew it way over the green and ended up making double bogey when I had just a simple pitch there. So I had a few of those instances, um, and I guess that's a little bit more about emotional control and mental control there, but it got me looking more at playing pitches by instinct versus a clock system. I think a clock system or just a half swing to half swing, you don't necessarily have to think about a clock, but if you want to think half to half, that kind of thing, that can help too. But that can get you started. But I think personally, as you become a better player, um, doing those by instinct is a little bit better. So there's a drill that you can do for that called the... Uh, all clubs, all flags drill. And um, basically the idea is you go to every uh, flag on your driving range and you hit every club to it. And you, so you're getting out of your mind of like what the distance is and playing by number and you're playing more by instinct. Um, that's more for irons, I guess. But similarly, you can do that with your wedges and just pick like, oh, there's a brown spot out there. I'm going to hit my pitching wedge to that, boop, and then you hit one there, and then you switch clubs and you grab your sand wedge, hit it to that same spot. And then you pick, uh, there's a, a little thing over here, and you hit to that spot, and then you go over to this spot and switch clubs and you hit it to there. So you just practice your instincts, and um, just let yourself take it back as far as you need to, and then come through, and, and like other sports where you're throwing a football, throwing a baseball, kicking a soccer ball, just react, do it instinctively, and the instincts and, and, uh, and your gut is like really good on that if you learn to trust yourself um, when you play pitches like that. So personally, I think that's a little bit better than a clock, clock type system. So I think that's all uh, for that. Um, just to recap here, make sure that the lofts on your wedges are gapped how you want them, um, and then uh, make sure that your contact is consistent, so use the uh, foot powder spray or chalk powder spray to make sure that you're making consistent contact. And then to help with that, watch the amount of tension in your swing, use the air blow, the humming trick. Um, and then from a technical standpoint, watch the shaft lean, be a little bit more shaft vertical, sweep or pick or collect the ball, all those things are gonna give you a little bit more forgiveness as far as your strike goes and help you be a little bit more consistent with your strike, which is gonna help you with better distance control. And then you can either start out with the, the clock drill if you're a person that plays by number, if you're a very number type person, um, uh, or if you're a little bit maybe more artistic and personally I think that's a little bit better. Learn, practice playing those more instinctually um, with the this all clubs, all flags drill. So. Put all those things together, give those things a try, and hopefully those things can help you um, improve your distance control with your pitching and just make you a better wedge player in general with your sterling irons or whatever wedges you're using.